Welcome big dogs. Today I'm going to show you how to perform a vibrational fatigue analysis on fasteners using FEA data. So the first step you want to do is you want to basically pull the forces out of all your connector elements that you want to do a fatigue analysis on. So the easiest way I found to do it is to create a set first. What you want to do is you want to create a fastener set. So this will allow you to pull loads out of all the fasteners. So if you go up here to the selection tool, select the simile wires, and then just go ahead and just drag and encompass your entire model, it'll go ahead and select those fastener elements. And then you'll middle mouse click and you've created your fastener set. The next thing you want to do is you want to go into the step module and you want to go to history output. You want to create history output to basically extract the force loads on your fastener so you can post process it later in an Excel spreadsheet. So we'll call it fastener PSD and we want to select the vibrational step or PSD step in this case. Next you want to go up here to your domain, select set, go to the fastener set we just created and then under connector you'll see all the loads or all the, this information you can pull, we want to go down to RCTF which is basically the RMS value of our connector forces. So we want to pull out our two shear loads and then our axial load because that's all we need to do a vibrational fatigue analysis for our fasteners. And then you want to remember to go up here and select your last increment otherwise it'll pull the forces at each time step. You just want the last one. You'll click OK. Okay, you can verify that you created it in the PSD step. So next thing we want to do is go submit the job. So I'm just going to create a new job just to keep things uh, kind of organized here. I'll call it Fastener PSD. Select Continue. I'll go with the default settings and then submit the job. And it'll take a few seconds. So the job's completed. Let's go to results. So what we want to do next is we want to extract those loads so we can put them in our Excel spreadsheet and post-process the results, determining margins of safety and all that info we need. So we'll go to XY data, go to create, and then we'll select our history output. And if we go through this list, we'll see basically the root mean square of our connector element forces in the one, two, and three directions. We want to select all those and then save as, as is. So we've pulled out all our loads here and then now we want to create a report. So if you go up here to report XY and what we want to do is we just want to select our loads. I'm going to select the loads in the shear one direction say apply and then go to the loads in the shear two direction click apply and then then the axial direction click apply and it'll pin those to this abacus rpt file so we'll go to that file we'll open it in notepad and you can see here it extracted all those loads so this is our one direction loads, or two direction loads, or three direction loads. We want to copy all these and then put them in a spreadsheet. So I've already done that. So I put them in here, extracted them. We have four elements. These are our loads. So now we want to take these loads and put them in our spreadsheet and post process the results. So we're going to take element three as an example. So if we go to our fastener fatigue spreadsheet, that we built earlier and I showed in another video you have all these inputs. Um, and if you remember, if you recall, we have a number two fastener so we can pull this from basically McMaster car. This is the fastener we're using. We have information such as screw diameter, thread size, threads per inch, 
tensile strength, yield strength. We have a lot of information there. So we take that information, put it in here. We also have torque. Um, so we would pull this from a spreadsheet we created earlier. Um, if you recall, we have a screw torque spreadsheet that was developed. So we're using the same values here. So our torque can be between six and seven inch pounds according to this spreadsheet. So we'd pull that, add this, these, those values to the mix. We put in our prevailing torque, which we get from tables. And then we can begin to put in our connector loads. So, so I'll go ahead and put in, copy these values over. So for my axial load, I'll paste it here. And then we have also axial load carried by our fastener. We would get that value from our bolt stiffness spreadsheet right here. So we did this before. And so we got a value of 26.1. You can see how all this is beginning to kind of melt together. That's why these spreadsheets were developed because, you know, they have multiple applications for different failure analyses. So um, we have our multipliers, our safety factor. Now I've got to put in my two shear loads. So that's my first one. And then my second one here. And then we have other inputs. We can get a stress concentration factor 2.2 for the threads. That's the highest you'll find. And then we have all our tensile loads and all this information we've seen before. So we go ahead and we look at our margins for joint separation. We're positive, so it doesn't separate. That's a good thing. Joint slip check, we're good. And so we go through here and now we look at our fatigue margin of safety and we can see that our margin of safety for fatigue is positive. And if we look at this curve to the right, we see that we're under the modified Goodman line, which means we have infinite life. And then we also have our torque spec. So we would tell the tech to torque it to 8.25. Um, so it takes into account prevailing torque. So remember that. So to extend this analysis to the other fastener elements, what I do is I put all this input and calculations into a row and column format. So I have my elements here. I put in the input data for each element. And then I put in my FEA data for each element, followed by my calculations that I use to determine margin of safety. You can see here for joint margins of safety, I have these values for joint slip. I have these margins of safety. And then I run through my the same calculations <laughs> and I end up determining a margin of safety for my fatigue. And you can see here, um, margins of safety is positive. They all represent infinite life and then I have my torque specifications right here for each. So that's how you do a fastener vibrational fatigue analysis um, using FEA data. So we took data from FEA and post-process it using Excel spreadsheets, which is a fast way to do things if you have everything set up right. And I advise everybody to do that. It's just, uh, it's very, once you get it all set up, it's it's really you can turn over these models pretty fast so i hope you learned something and i'll see you next time adios